Shout out to my nigga Free, nigga Westside Bob. What up, what up, what up? It's your girl Free coming at you guys live with another exclusive vlog. Um, I don't know where I'm at. We in like somewhere in Hollywood. Okay, somewhere in Hollywood, you guys. A vlog from Westside Boogie. Say what's up to the people. Hey guys, I'm just happy to be here supporting this woman. She's amazing and it's busting. Oh, thank you so much. No, I think I really think what you do is dope. Um, like talking is these artists at early stages right. that's like pivotal when they when they could look back at that and fans like looking looking back at shit like that so that shit's dope oh thank you so much and he didn't stage that you guys I yeah was, she didn't, I didn't know, know she didn't i didn't know he was, he was gonna say that shit at all so i'm like blushing right now i don't even know what really to say to that but no thank you so much i appreciate that because that means you really been watching mm -hmm. and you've been paying attention because that's really what the whole point of the vlogs is like now it's starting to get a little bit to the point to where people with platforms more comfortable in the game now are coming to me like you know let's do an interview but at first it just started off just trying to bring light to certain rappers that i were cool with in bakersfield That's in right. la you know just trying to get people familiar with something you, you remember your very first interview yeah it was my homegirl. That's fire. Shout out Benzie. Shout out And then Benzie. the second one was DJ Ashby. She was um, AZ Chikes DJ mm -hmm. last summer. And she's from Bakersfield as well. So that's where it started. It started in my city. That's fire. You know, it was one of those things to where I was quarantining and everybody was quarantining. I wasn't doing nothing. I couldn't go back to work. So I was kind of stuck. And I was just like, you know, I know, I knew a few people, little rappers in the industry, shit mm -hmm. like that, producers, you know, different little connections. And I was like, I'll just start small. But it just kind of started in Bakersfield because I was scared to leave when the Corona very first hit. That's and then after that, it's just now it's everywhere. I'm, you know, I've interviewed people from Detroit, you know, people from different cities. I try to like shout out Ill, shout out Wyatt, man. Shout out to my boys. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love them. Those were actually really, really dope interviews. I I get a lot of love in Compton. And I, you know, I can't help but show Compton love as well. I also did Key Riches, too. That's my boy. Yeah, my boy so Key. shout out Key. Yeah, man. You know, oh you're God. also from Compton, right? Same neighborhood. Yeah. Okay, so give the vlog a little bit of a background of like, we. everybody knows who you are. So we're not even going to play that. You know that whole we don't know who you are you're definitely in influential in the music game right now and just always have been since you've came out so give the vlog though a little bit of background of where where you come from and mm -hmm. uh early moving around i was like everywhere like la and long beach um then i went to church in compton and yeah everything changed from there when i was in middle school i was in the choir i was singing in the choir at church that's how I fell in love with music. Oh, really? Sorry, yeah, I was doing that. I was like singing with the girls because my voice was so high. I hadn't hit puberty yet. And then, um, yeah, I started doing gospel raps. Then I started, it was these niggas in the church. So I was from Compton. You know what I'm saying? It was like the cooler kids. And started hanging with them, and the rest was history. So, yeah. <laughs> shout out, shout out my people, Puka. What year was that when you started the gospel rap? What age group? Uh, 13. So, okay. A uh, hundred years ago. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. So you feel like I can honestly, I would have never thought that just because you know you don't come off to me as a gospel rapper. But the fact that mm -hmm. your music has so much soul mm -hmm. and it's just the way you deliver it, I can see. I can definitely see that how that played a part yeah, listen, in your later music. I listen to a lot of singing shit most of the time. I don't really listen to a lot of rap. I love rap though. Like when I'm in my ratchet bag. Yeah. But 85, 80% of the time it's like R&B or something like that. Okay. So what do you feel like, so since you listen mostly to R&B music, where do you feel like the inspiration comes from with the rap? Like where do you, where does it? Uh, I'm, 
I mean, whatever I listen to at the time, it'd be, it be hard shit that come out, like, my homies, everybody in my neighborhood, and really, I'm inspired by life, like, uh, I can't say it's, like, no flow or a way I rap that comes from nobody, it's just, like, I just like the feeling of telling what I'm going through, or, or just being, like, true to myself, and yeah. like, however it come out, it come out, for real. Okay. But, yeah, I, I like listening to a lot of Lauryn Hill, Kendrick, of course, yeah. the greatest thing in the world. Um, <laughs> yeah, and homies, L, Y, S. I'm just gonna I'm gonna name drop the homies a lot because this this what I want to do this interview is make sure I put my niggas on. Yeah, so, exactly. Uh, L Y S Key, uh, Wally, Twin. Um, who else over there in the neighborhood? There, who? Ruger, Rosecrans Ruger, my favorite rapper. Hop. Um, but yeah, I love all the homies. Okay. And Bebo, I actually Bebo, my bad. Rosecrans I've, yeah. I've been in. I've actually been encountered with all of them. That's crazy. You know, I've been really blessed this year and I have to take this moment to like really thank all of the rappers and the producers and the managers that have been putting the interviews together. That's been allowing me to interview them. You know, it's, I'm just like, honestly, I'm just a small town girl from Bakersfield. Like we don't really have that many stars come up out of there. We got our few though, you know, but music is just something that I've always felt comfortable. When I had a bad day or something, I throw on some shit. When I'm mad at a nigga, yeah. you know, I throw on some music and I talk my shit, make a video. So it's like to actually be a part of history, like being able to interview rappers that I actually listen to. That's the dope part of this. And I don't think a lot of people understand yeah. that. I think people just think I want to just be around rappers to be around yeah. them. But it's like when I'm li- when I'm driving in the car and, you know, I'm listening to somebody like YS or Wally or you know Perel or VVS BZ the, yeah. the the people that I've interviewed or even Draco my actual homeboy you know mm-hmm. it's like that's dope as hell to know like okay these niggas are telling the truth because I know these niggas personally yeah and that's another reason why I set out to do the interviews because it helps me learn the artists yeah I think that's what's dope about music it's like you don't got to be from the nigga neighborhood and yeah like you could come from different worlds but music is so like it's such a universal thing that right it's a feel and everybody could just we, we all feel that way so right that's what make it dope so do you feel like your music has any inspiration from how you grew up where to give, give the people a little bit of a background you know where are you from are you from compton or are you from bompton uh, and i you know what i gotta do this now because y'all been pressing me i got pressed by key i got pressed by animal yeah. so now i see there's a diff- there's a difference so you know yeah what I'm from I'm from the bop, the bop inside of it. Okay. Um, I'm from Westside Capitol Park. Um, yeah, that's my that's my, that's my family. That's that's like that's what it is. Right. That's just it's a part of me. Um, and yeah, I draw from 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 life over there. I draw from my homies, even if it's it, it don't gotta necessarily be my story. Right. I, I draw from my homies' life and the shit they go through because I know like I can feel it. So that's what it is. Like, yeah. I think the thing that I like about your music, too, is the fact that even though you are from there, it's not, it doesn't come off to me as gangster rap, like, you know, regular conventional yeah, gangster um, type of rap. It's just real hip. You give me real, like, hip vibes. Yeah, Something I'm, I'm that's more, like... I'm, I'm more into to, to the life part of it, and, and, and the order you get, you lean, you start learning. Well, I'll start learning how, how valuable love is, and, like, and, and that's where I'm at. I got a kid in there, uh, my, my son in there. So I'm trying to, to show niggas that we could draw from a place of love and it don't got to be out of anger. Because that's, that's all we know growing up is anger, retaliation, get a nigga back, and, right. and it, and it got to gotta stop somewhere. So. Right. So what got you into wanting to rap? Uh, church, yeah. Church, um, first it was just singing, but I couldn't sing that good. So I was like, I did the gospel rap thing and then. When I start rapping, it just with the attention I got from it initially, I'm like, oh, I'm cool. Like, it's a world I could I could create. Like, I right. could create this character. So at first, I was rapping about shit I wasn't even doing. Like, I was trying to be like Lil Wayne and and doing some other shit. And then like, I started rapping about shit I was going through. And and the feeling you get from doing shit like that, it was unmatched. So I was just mm. like, yeah, this what bag I'm gonna be in from now on. So. And I think that's dope as hell that you're like actually able to come on here and keep that shit real and say that like. A lot of rappers don't admit that they're not living the life that they're rapping today. And it's like for you yeah. to say, you know, I, I there was a point in time where I was rapping about shit I wasn't really doing. Yeah. I was just rapping. Mm-hmm. That shows, you know, your character as a as an individual as a, yeah. and as a person. 
because there's so many people not necessarily that I've interviewed because everybody I've interviewed has been you know seeming authentic as much as I can see you never know what a person yeah. does when you're not around but there's a lot of rappers out there that's not living the life they're rapping about and they'll still get on interviews and still make it seem like that I mean yeah I mean it's a it's a tough cycle because of course I mean they think that's what Bitches won't too though, because right. it, it is what bitches won't. And we don't. They, they, I mean, majority of them gonna lean towards you feel me the the that type of vibe just because I don't know niggas lean towards like just like niggas lean to, towards the most ratchet bitch right now. Right. It's gonna it's like that's, a, and that's <laughs> a part of it. Why kids kids start growing up doing shit like that because they trying to feed into this character that other niggas created. Right. And it's like yeah, it's you don't gotta it don't make you a bitch to like. Not having had to kill somebody, you know, right. you just ain't been in that situation. Of course, you know what I'm saying. If if, if nigga, if you get put in that that that's that shit, you got to do what you got to do, or right. you feel me, just stay your ass in the house. But if you ain't encountered it yet, don't don't lie about it, and, exactly. and, and don't like even wish that energy on yourself because right. it's it's not nothing good that come from me. You feel right. me? So it's like niggas is, niggas is bringing that energy to itself because that's what. What type of timing right now? Yeah, because that's what they want to portray, bro. (laughs) That's what they want to portray. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's you know when I look at a lot of the rappers I've interviewed and I've came across with in the last year and a half, their fans are younger. A lot of their fans are younger, and I think yours are older because my brother-in-law, my sister, they're older than me significantly. So you saying I got no young fans? You got some young fans, but. I mean kids. Not like kids. The, uh, niggas really have kid yeah. fit, you know what I mean? Under age. Yeah, I mean it's all about what you want to cater to too, because it's not right. like niggas so bad. I mean, I can't. Yeah, exactly. Like who am I to tell a nigga what? what but I don't think it was intentional though. That's what I'm saying. I don't think it was intentional. I think it just happened like that. I think they were setting out to make music for an older generation and it just happened that way. Too many niggas that's lying and it's like it's it's like watering water watering down the game, but Okay, so with, on that topic of the lion, how do you feel about the snitching that's been going on out here with all the different rappers that have been coming up that have been snitching? How do you, I won't name any names. We don't get that messy on here, but um, how do you feel just about the ones that have been coming out? What's your what's your your opinion on the snitching? Uh, I don't got no opinion on niggas like outside of like my circle like you feel me if well as far as like me knowing what niggas is doing it's like if that shit don't affect me i don't really care but i mean we all know i mean i know snitching is just not a thing you just yeah you're supposed to stay in the house if you're not if you're not gonna be on that type of time when it come down to it so niggas know what they signed up for and it's just it's just not it's, it's not part of the game you gotta go, yeah. you gotta go sit down but also i say that again to say i don't give a fuck what niggas outside of my circle is doing and I don't even care to even like engage in what they got going on. Right. Because a lot of rappers have put out, you know, public service announcements. Not even that they fucked with the person. It's just giving their opinion on snitching and all of that type of thing. And I've never... Well, I don't hang with... I don't... Yeah, see, the, the, that type of politics get tricky because rap politics and, and street politics, is, it's not the same. Because, exactly. Because, You're right about that. Because a lot of niggas didn't grow up with the same codes, but... Um, that's why I stay in the house because it's just like I'd rather just not even get put in a situation. Don't don't even I don't force relationships with rappers. It's right. I'm not into it. If niggas is solid, I, I hang with it. But I got friends already, and if like I'm not gonna go force new friendships when I already got friends. Right. So yeah. Is there any? So I don't hang with no snitches. <laughs> no, I did, I definitely know that. <laughs> but um, is there any rappers that you? You don't really fuck with? You got any rap beef with anybody? Uh, rap beef, nah, because rap beef with, like, in my neighborhood, it's not going to be rap beef. So it's going to be real beef. So I just, I I don't, like, I'm not going to get into it with no rapper over no lyrics, unless niggas, like, say something personal about us, then then at that point, it might have to go deep in rap. But, uh, no, I don't don't care. I just just love the homies. I don't don't got no issues with no rappers that I can think of, because nobody said anything to me and I don't, I don't hang with niggas okay that's a, that's a good answer that's a really good answer everybody gets on here and tells me that I'm rap beef some of them I know to be a lie some of them it might be the truth but your answer I believe yeah I, I ain't lying I ain't no rap beef yeah no rap beef 
And you seem like the type to me, you know. I beef with a couple R and B singers, like a couple girls. Not no real beef, just like, you know, didn't end on good terms at the time. Oh really? Just playing, I'm, just playing. I'm playing but I'm not playing. Is that what you wanted to be in your past life, an R and B singer? No, that's funny as hell. <laughs> nah, low key on me, I probably did. Yeah. That would be fire. So what do you feel like you've gotten from the music? How long have you been rapping? I don't think you said that on the vlog. Twenty years. Nah, um, fifteen years. Ooh. Fifteen years. Um, and it didn't it didn't pop till years ago. So that tell you you gotta really work at it. Um, yeah. But what about gain? What about gain from it? Yes. Um, what do you feel you got? I know I music? learned a lot about myself just because the situations music puts you in with your family, uh, the people around you, the expectations get heavier, the pressure get heavier, and you like you learn who you are because how you react in the situation how you adapt under pressure so right i learned a lot about myself through that um you learn what's genuine and who not genuine you get put in the same you think when you get out the street that you get out of them type of situations but these labels it's gangsters too so you get put in them situations at, at bigger scales so yeah i learned a lot as far as that and i learned that it's a lot of hoes in the industry <laughs> Yeah. Like a lot of what do you mean by that? Like, like females that come from it or ones that are just in the industry. I was talking about niggas in general. I mean niggas too. Niggas, oh, okay. niggas and females. It's just a lot of like weird type of people in the industry, and you just gotta protect your energy. But that's what any type of field. It's right. It's gonna be them type of people, and you gotta make sure your energy protected. Okay. Are you are actually signed, right? I'm signed. Yeah. Okay. So what label are you signed to? I'm signed to uh, Shady Records. I haven't gotten anybody that was actually signed to a major label like that. So can you give the vlog a little bit of a difference of how that is versus being like an independent rapper? Because I'm pretty sure you started off independent. Mm -hmm. So you've had a, a significant amount of years doing that. How is it different? Is it anything that um, you like, dislike would, about it? No, nah, I wouldn't say it's nothing I would dislike um, because I, I love him. I would say it's about learning to, even before I um, was with Eminem, I was with Interscope, and I think it's about not making your expectations to be, okay, now I can chill, and I'm signed now, and now it's relax time. It's about still right. staying self-sufficient and like having that, that way you operate with whoever around you or if it's by yourself and keeping that mind state and knowing that, okay, this is a bonus now, but I still got to do what I got to do for myself. and. That's that's what every artist needs to know. Um, yeah, and make sure when you go in these situations that you're not going into them, um, letting them think that they need you. Make sure the leverage is even and that you know what you're bringing to the table and you don't let them take no value away from that. Not that that's happening to me, but I've seen it happen. Right. And that, that you know what value you bring to the table and what value they bring and, and y'all come together, but don't let them because it can get to that point where you think you they think that you need them because of the way you act or the way you move so yeah just saying self-sufficient right and do you feel like you're doing the same exact stuff that you were doing before as far as your work work ethic and all of that oh uh, yeah this was my engineer before the deal and this is my producer and engineer still right how now. long have you been signed um i was with interscope for it's been a couple years four years five years okay cool so, do you feel like that was a better decision for you, or do you feel like you should have stayed independent? Oh, yeah. Are you happy with your decision? I'm definitely happy with my decision. It's, it's okay. not. It's not about regrets. And even if it, even if I wasn't happy with the decision, it'd be, it'd be wasted energy to even like engage in that feeling because you can't, you can't. Take you can't it. change it. You can't change exactly. nothing about that. So, them type of convers type of conversations not even like good for your mentality. I'm, right. I'm, I'm grateful for our man. Super happy. Alright, why do I feel like you should shut the press me on the little? I don't never. I'll be hearing a slick I'll be hearing a slick little uh, conversations and then you know I love you, girl. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. I always gotta, you know, press my issue mm -hmm. on the vlog. Especially when I get somebody on here that really know what he's talking about. Y'all be trying I to take like, my exactly, shit. And I feel like them questions is, is like gotta be asked because it's like Yeah, so the many, people there's so know. many niggas out here who who, who don't know. And who would just get in situations, rush, right. rush into them, and then and then be fucked over. So yeah, I've seen it happen, and that's the reason why I asked because I haven't had anybody 
like I said, that was signed. Yeah. You know, a lot of the rappers yeah. I interview are independent. But I mean, even with their independence, they're still doing good. But it's just different. And I, I honestly, I'm not a rapper. As many as I've been around, I'm not a rapper. So I can't speak on how it really is. You know what yeah. I mean? But you definitely could speak on it. So and I know. It's definitely, it's definitely a world for niggas to be independent. Black man, if you, mm-hmm. if you can, and you can, you can find a way to. To, to move like that, stay as independent as you can and build right. the leverage up. So when you, you do want to partner with the label, you, you feel me, you bring more to the table and they can't, they can't take advantage of you at all. Right, so exactly. That's what niggas need to do, for sure. Right. So if you give the vlog a little bit of a background, I mean, I personally love him and him. How did you get about meeting him and getting signed and all that with him? So basically, I was, I was in Detroit, right? And I was walking down the street and I seen him. And I walked up to him and I was like, hey man, let's battle. Mm-hmm. I've seen him, right? I'm yeah. Saying, this didn't happen. <gasps> uh, so, uh, I was fucking. He's alive. <laughs> I was just chilling at home. I was already signing Interscope. I was chilling at home. And I just got a call that um, they got a, they had heard some stuff and that they was interested. And then flew to Detroit. And Eminem is, is M. How you picture him? A, a, a nigga who loved rap. Yeah, loved exactly. Music, and, th- and that's what. That's what I love, cause I love outside of like the feeling it make me get. I love the art, the actual art of rapping. So, being around somebody that like t- treat this shit like like the most important shit in the world, like you should do your passion. It's like it's, it, it pushes you. So right. Yeah. Okay, that's dope as hell. So yeah, was that me. was that one of like your favorite rappers growing up, or was you know just somebody? I mean, you like? yeah, I loved him growing. I loved him. I grew to appreciate him more older than I did growing up. Cause growing up, I, I I heard the first project and I was like, damn, this shit so fire. But then I got in like Compton mode and it was like Nigga. I was on some other shit. Ratchet shit. And then mm-hmm. when I when I the, the older I got, I just started appreciating the shit more. And now like you can't not put him in the top five. It's right. Like, exactly. Definitely. You know, yeah. It's so crazy. I seen something on Twitter the other day and they were talking about like which ones Slim Shady. LP or Marshall Mathers LP and I'm like first to fucking all like it's, those two are not even the same like I feel like Slim Shady LP oh you was really like, a Shady fan what I <laughs> like I feel like Slim Shady LP was like more of his like turned up like ratchet type music Marshall Mathers LP was definitely going through something he was giving his life story like I used to put that shit on as a kid Talk I stole shit. it from shit. my sister Fahima shout you out because you always kept me up on the music yeah, you might be like more in tune with the shady shit than me. Like, yeah, no, like, and I see that I said definitely Marshall Mathers because it's just like, come on, I put it out. My closet was on there. Stan was on there. Like, mm-hmm. all the all the classics was on that album. We were just talking about Stan yesterday. Like, who? Like, nobody's done nothing like that since that's been created. Like, and and even with the other dude being in the video and me hearing his voice, I still felt like it was a whole different character. Yeah. Even though he's rapping both parts, like that's you're a genius for that. Yeah, the concept of that song is is probably the greatest yes. concept ever. And I loved it. Song. Give the vlog a little bit of an exclusive. Exclusive, um, like something that you haven't said nowhere else. You do all, you don't do a lot of interviews. I don't do no, a lot of interviews. So yeah, it's almost over. I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> fucking. Um, you want me to get him? Uh, fucking. This is my exclusive. Is that? Lil L, YS, Wiley, Twin, Mari, Vivo, <laughs> all the homies is next up free. right now. Free mm-hmm. Weeder, Free mm-hmm. Bull, Free Ruchi, Free all the homies. That's my exclusive. I think Free is amazing. Um, all the LA rappers, I think all y'all niggas is amazing. Um, and yeah, get this shit booming. Shout out my young nigga KB Divine. Um, shout out all the black women in the world. You're but, celibate, huh? I heard. For the great yeah, month. this year. I'm probably going to be over that a couple of days, but. What? I ain't had sex in 2021. That's good. I don't think you should get It wasn't on purpose. I just was working. It's not like. <laughs> Wait, doing. you made a full public service announcement uh, on live? Like you did it on purpose? No, I'm just, I've just been working. I ain't had time to be a thought. <laughs> it wasn't on purpose. It's <laughs> Nah, I ain't had time to be a thought, but I probably will soon. Okay, well. I'm on my project. Yeah, that's it. What's the name of it? Have you announced it yet? It's called Free. We name it's, it. I was going to say, you should name you. it Free. We're going to name it after you. Okay. My glasses keep getting foggy. And when is that scheduled to drop? 
yesterday. You you be lying, huh? Like, I don't know when it's coming. I don't know when it's coming. You lie to y'all? Nah, <laughs> it's coming up. It's almost there. Oh, wait. Pause. Let's talk about that little newspaper clip that kidnapped you. Oh, video yeah. that shit was hilarious how did that come about i loved that that's uh, about having a great team behind you shout out to lvrn um they created that idea and yeah them niggas is amazing because you want to make music that's my manager um i definitely appreciate you for coming on my vlog and allowing me to get some great behind the scenes that will be before the interview so you guys make sure you guys don't fast forward if you did fast forward go back and watch don't it don't fast forward man. and I appreciate all my subscribers and my followers out there that's been supporting the vlog. It just, it's just been such a great reaction. I honestly don't even know how to, to take the shit. Oh, look at I, you. Don't, don't do that. Funny. Don't do that. Because you gave me a shot, too. Let's not forget that. <laughs> yeah, you got drunk off one shot, bro. No, you didn't have to. Two, and that was some special edition 1800. Shout out to 1800. You know what I'm saying? 